OK, so a few people have expressed an interest in wanting to know how he made this ad from the start, so here's the story. It started about a month after the competition was launched, around mid-March, when the whole thing came to my attention. I went onto the website and saw the entries racking up, and couldn't help but think a little thought and expertise might bag me 100k, which I could have really done with. The 400 or so entries at that point were pretty much uh, ropey, I suppose, and I knew there was potential to clean up with the right ad, uh, much as most people thought, I guess. So my wife and I sat down one night and went through the process, uh, given the brief, imagining that we were a proper ad agency and, and coming up with ideas and then, and then fine-tuning them. We settled on the castaway idea because it uh, seemed to be the easiest to film, would look the best given the kind of zero budget and with the least amount of actors and crew needed. Uh, we approached the idea literally from scratch, you know, who's the marketing campaign aimed at and all that sort of stuff. Well, people already know Doritos, they're a household name and uh, there's millions of bags sold daily, so surely any money spent on advertising would need to address one of two things, um, to get more people to eat Doritos or to make people already aware of them uh, or already eat them um, if they're a new flavours or something about the brand that they didn't already know about, maybe a new dip or something. So we decided to go with the other flavours idea, partly because although I like Doritos, I'm not mad on them and didn't realise until we did the research just how many flavours there were. So that was how we began to shape the idea uh, of two guys on a desert island. They get washed up with a crate of Doritos, they both lay claim to them, they do the rock, paper, scissors thing to see who gets them, and when we see the guy who wins, he hates that particular flavour. The loser then picks up the bag and sees it's his favourite flavour. That's the gag. Job done. £100,000. Thank you very much. So, we spent a bit of time getting the idea tight and I drew an animatic for the idea uh, that was playing out in my head and scanned that in and edited it together to make a basic moving storyboard. Um, it was missing a few key things as static images, so I made an another one where, there were, where things moved and conveyed the action a bit better. Um, ran it past some friends and colleagues, got the thumbs up, and so we decided to, to start production planning. The box uh, was the crate, was made by my colleague Tim Clark, an expert cabinet maker, but he also makes crates. Uh, he made that one in about 20 minutes. Amazing. We stencil sprayed it and the props were done. Uh, clothes from Primark with some repeats in case they got too dirty and we were ready to go. I work with a regular team of people, so crew wasn't a problem, and we had just bought the Canon or the new Canon 7D uh, DSLR with video function that everyone's raving about. Um, so it was a great opportunity to test drive it in earnest. Um, next up was actors. Um, I had worked with both Luke and Alex on a previous film, uh, and knew they'd be perfect for the roles. And after contacting them both, they were they agreed to help out, and so we were were sorted for for actors and crew um, very early on. Um, Next up was planning, the shoot, uh, and then the shot schedule, uh, which shots we'd do first, etc. Um, and plan that around wherever we ended up filming. Um, we chose four possible locations. Uh, there were two in Cornwall, one in Kent, and one in West Sussex. Uh, then, of course, the next issue was weather. It had been lovely whilst we were planning, but a check with the Met Office showed there was trouble ahead, uh, and we had to sit tight for about three weeks until we uh, really had to get something shot, or the post-production might take us over the deadline. Thankfully, in April, we were able to get down to West Wittering in Sussex at some god-awful hour, and we all met up there on the beach. Um, far from being deserted, it was full of people, yeah, even that early, so without further ado, we quickly knocked off the wide shots before it got too busy. Um, we had to actually switch the action from the storyboards as well. We had to mirror it because of the, uh, the way that I'd drawn it. It didn't quite fit the, the location as it was, so we switched it. Um, uh, and then once we'd done that opening shot, um, we could relax, well, relax a bit, as much as you could relax in sub-zero temperatures and biting wind. Um, but filming was pretty straightforward. We used, uh, an, an obviously, natural light and a couple of big laster light reflectors for fill. And the weather treated us well. Although it stayed dry, um, it, we also had quite a bit of sun that you know, gave us that, that look that it was, a, it was a, a summer's day. We also made a, a dolly from some skateboard wheels and a, a ladder, which worked a treat. Uh, it, it seemed daft spending the time making it and also lugging a 14-foot ladder down the coast, but the, the shot, in my opinion, is the best in the film. OK, it bounces a bit, but hey. 
Uh, the ironic thing is, is that we do have a, a fully spec dolly, but it's just too heavy and labour intensive to set up. Not to mention, uh, you know, setting it on a beach is not the greatest place for it and balancing it and everything. And so we, we went minimalist and, and guerrilla style uh, um, in case we got jumped on by the fun police or someone. Um, as it turned out, we filmed for about six hours without a hitch, so except the other moving tides uh, and the dogs running into frame. And, and we had some people as well in, at one point just, just wander straight into the frame while we were clearly filming, but, you know, it was a public place, so we couldn't really um, moan about it. I, I did feel terrible asking the guys to get into the sea as it was li quite literally freezing. Um, Luke was shaking uncontrollably, and I was wondering whether it came come across in the shot. But on action, he just got into character, and you'd never know he was so cold. And we kept spraying them uh, between takes with freezing cold water as well, so they looked wet. Uh, but we spared them on the long shots, as you uh, you couldn't really tell. So we finished filming around 3pm. We said goodbye to the, the big crowd that had gathered around us and uh, headed for the pub for a nice warm lunch and a pint. Next, the edits, which was academic really, since we just shot the storyboards exactly. It was uh, a matter of just selecting the best take and then dropping it into the edit using the animatic as a guide. After the edit, we had it graded to look like a hot summer day in the Pacific, as much as you could without it looking fake, and then it was ready for the upload. So, of course, by the time we'd finished our ad, uh, a lot of much better ones had gone up, but I kept with my thought that we would make the top three, kept my fingers crossed right up until we never made the top 50. But hey, I had some interest from a London agency who I'm now, con uh, now talking to about representation, so... It's uh, it's had a silver lining. Um, it's not the first film I've made. I hope that's obvious. Um, I, but I do have a great job working at Kingston University running the moving image department. So I'm not going to be rushing off into any career directing commercials anytime soon. Uh, anyway, um, thanks for your interest. Thanks for watching. And I hope that this little um, behind the scenes talk has, has helped show how it was made and helps you in your own endeavours with, with filmmaking. Cheers. Bye.